afternoon all and so you know on this channel I talk a lot about moving to rural Thailand and I sing the praises of moving to rural Thailand well we're gonna go and have a little walk now um, just around the local area and I want to tell you some reasons why not to move to rural Thailand or some situations where I would say it's probably not a good idea to move to rural Thailand so let's take a look Beautiful coconut tree there. We got the cows out today. So the number one thing that comes to mind when you think about moving to rural Thailand is I wouldn't do it if you were just alone and single. If you were alone and single and you had no family or nobody, I probably wouldn't move out here alone. And that's because a lot of what makes your day interesting, a lot of what keeps you active and um, keeps you happy is, is the family, is the people around you. Got the cows in the field here, these are our cows. The family cows, of course. It's family, it's, it's the kids. You don't necessarily have to have kids, but have a partner, you know, don't try and, I don't think I would try and do it alone. Um, doing it alone, it'd be difficult anyway, because you'd probably have to rent and I mean it could work, I'm not saying it couldn't work, but I think in general, don't go it alone. Next, and some of this might be like state the obvious, but if you're going to be out here, you better like nature. You better like being in nature, amongst the trees, amongst the fields. <laughs> Got Rosie following me here. She's come to check on me, the dogs. Be, like being around nature, like being in, in the nature. It goes without saying, like if you're in, if you love the city vibe where it's busy and you've got, you got the nightclubs and you know, it's all, you've got cinemas, you've got the mall, that kind of thing. This ain't gonna be for you, you know? Of course you can drive to all that stuff. You know, maybe it's half an hour, an hour away to some civilization, to a mall, that kind of thing. I think for a decent cinema we're about two, two and a half hours away. For a nightclub, there's, there's like Thai bars and Thai, there's no nightclubs here, but there's Thai bars. And if you wanted to go to a nightclub, it wouldn't be too far to go, maybe an hour. For a nightclub, it'll probably be quite Thai, but it's not really a tourist nightclub, if you know what I mean. So it's, it's about, do you like nature? Do you like to be in nature? Can you deal with insects? Insects are a big part of your life in rural Thailand, believe it or not. And I wouldn't have known that before living here, moving here and living here. But throughout the day, you know, there's, there's ants crawling on you. There's mosquitoes biting you sometimes, although it's not as bad as you, you might think. Um, especially now we're in the cottage and we're indoors. Um, you've got insects flying in your face, especially at night if you're using a torch to look somewhere or Rosie's excited you know like we walk to the outdoor kitchen so we use we have to use a torch and then all of these bugs fly in your face bugs come in ants come in um, it's not unusual to put your flip-flops on in the morning and they'd be covered in ants that have been there through the night there's butterflies there's moths there's there's insects now on on that theme as well there's a lot of animals and there's some dangerous animals there's snakes which I'm always quite aware of especially walking in places like this you got to be careful where you walk the snakes they sit in the Sun obviously to warm themselves they're cold-blooded so they they want to be you know where you're walking and in grass like this it can be a danger so the snakes the scorpions the scolopendra large centipedes so this is another consideration so if you want to be in the city rural Thailand won't be for you if this isn't this isn't the kind of thing that you love like I love this look at this rice field it's just starting to grow now it's getting to that beautiful rainy season now the other thing is the heat so when you live in rural and simple you may not want to run air cons all the time so you kind of have to climatize to the heat. And 
Whereas in the city, in buildings, you've got the aircon on all the time, you're from one aircon to another, to a cafe and whatnot. That may suit you better than rural Thailand. Now saying all this, because there's not so much stimulation and activity and things like that, what you're gonna do is your time is important. So you've gotta be a person that can enjoy projects. I do a lot of projects on my own. I spend a lot of time on my own and I'm always kind of busy tinkering away at different projects. And so that's kind of an important consideration. You're not stimulated and entertained externally a lot. So you have to have a lot going on. Um, which if you have a, like a little farm or you have a little plot of land, which is not difficult to do in rural Thailand, like it's, it's cheap in many places still. Uh, it won't be in about 5, 10, 15 years. I think prices are gonna go up and it's gonna be more and more difficult to do stuff. But if you can get yourself a little plot, then have projects on your farm. Animals maybe, or different plants. Uh, it's important to have projects. So you might be thinking about moving to rural Thailand because you're retired and your working has come to an end. But some people out there may still wanna make this trip this journey, maybe even to stay for six months first, which I would definitely recommend. So you can actually, you know, before you build a house and all this stuff, come and stay for six months, do a long stint, make sure it's right for you. We did, we stayed for a year before we built anything at all. So stay for a while and decide if it's for you first. But understand here that if you're not retired and you've not got an income coming from a pension, or perhaps you've got a rental property back home. If that doesn't apply to you, then you need to think about work. And in rural Thailand, you just ain't gonna find any. There's very, very little work. Perhaps a teacher in a local school, I've talked about this before, on a low salary. So looking at like 20 to 30,000 baht a month. Um, and that would be kind of it. Really, if you don't have the rental property and you don't have a retirement uh, income, then I would suggest find an online job. So you've got online teaching, of course. You've got online design work. You've got many, many things that you can do online. Maybe you already have a company in your, at your home country that allows you to work remotely and you can do that. So you need to find some form of online income um, even Damo, my wife, she has an Instagram business. So that's an online income, which she's selling products. Um, so there is, there is business that you can do in Thailand as well, although it's a little bit more difficult. Then you get faced with the very similar problems of visas and work permits and things. So this I also covered in my book, um, Thailand Expat, a guide to moving to Thailand, available on Amazon. And so in the link in the description. Um, so this I, I covered there as well. There's a lot of gray area about this. And there's, you're not gonna register a company to do a bit of design work online. That's just not gonna happen. And the Thai government are not really pursuing you. They're more interested in people that are working Thai jobs, especially in tourist areas. So it is often the case that many expats break the rules so to speak now i'm not suggesting you do that but i am saying that in certain circumstances you may just have to and that is just a fact of living in thailand uh, the bureauc bureaucracy here is not always so kind of clear and logical as we may want it to be so sometimes we we would just want like one of the clear guidelines to somebody say doing some design work online, what are the guidelines for them? Well, it's kind of unclear at the moment. So you could say categorically, classes as work, and so it's illegal without a work permit, but it happens all the time. And they are talking about a, a digital nomad visa. I'm not sure if it is live yet. Maybe somebody can let us know in the comments if it is live, but I think it's got all kinds of stipulations to it that just make it like logically not very sound, which um, doesn't surprise me. So that's, um, that's another consideration is work. Have something ready online um, if you want to stay out here and have fingers in many pies. So I know expats actually that are retired and they've got a bit of money. You know, they, they're not short money, 
but they also have fingers in lots of different little pies little Thai businesses set up little side projects maybe some online endeavors so having those little side projects and those online endeavors you don't have to be like broke to to do them it's good because number one it keeps you kind of busy and active and and you're not bored um boredom is is the big problem with retirement of course you know don't they say something about retirement like when you retire you've only it shortens your lifespan or something so it keeps you active keeps you thinking and it's an additional income and it allows for social and community activities so going out chatting with people bringing people together in some some cases I, i've got retired expat friends that do that kind of thing so um can, you can consider that too if you've got a bit of startup capital to do some side projects why not so that's another key consideration next is your visa so make sure you're going to have the right visa the right visa is paramount i think we'll go through the house so if you're on a retirement visa nice and easy but just remember you've got to have the 800,000 baht some people confuse that for dollars 800,000 baht in the thai bank account and if you get your marriage visa, it's 400,000 baht in a Thai bank account, two to three months of the year, depending on when you process it. So, I mean, rather than, the elite visa is a good option for some people that are not married or over 55. I think it is, or is it 50 or 55? You guys can tell me in the comments because I'm not on a retirement visa, I'm on a marriage visa. So the elite visa does offer that for people but it's quite a lot, a lot of money to pay up front. I think it's like fifteen, twenty thousand uh, dollars. It's six hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, six hundred thousand baht. So it's a lot of money to pay up front for a visa. When if you're over fifty, you get a retirement visa, or you're married, you get a marriage visa. It's not complicated. You're just doing paperwork once a year, and so long as you meet the criteria, there really is no problem. We've never had an issue with it. So. You might as well i know for some people they think well i'm married or i'm i'm retired and i'm i do meet the retirement requirements but i'd rather pay the money so i don't have to do the paperwork and if you're really wealthy then yeah you should do that like if it's not a problem to you but i just think if you're retired or you're married you get the marriage visa and put the 15 grand into something that could make money or you know invest it in, into into something it could be it's a lot of money to build a, a property you know our cottage wasn't much more than that so i understand like the elite visa that it has its certain perks they'll pick you up at the airport you can come and go as you please uh all of that stuff but if you can get a retirement visa get a marriage visa go that way so that's another thing to consider um and i think the, the work one is really key the work one is an important one so i mean other than that about moving to rural thailand don't move here if you're a very sociable person and you like company a lot um you know unless if you, if you like like a lot of people around because here it's just like the villagers um we don't really socialize with the villagers much it's a lot like uh we have these parties and things like that and the ceremonies but generally there's not much to talk about <laughs> with the villagers they um they're lovely people but they uh generally just talk about what food they're eating and what lao kao they're drinking and it's not exactly stimulating conversation let's put it that way um but they're very nice people of course to be around so if you're a very sociable person this is not going to be the lifestyle for you um i think living out here whether it's rural thailand or rural anywhere is just it's something within us that wants to separate from society a little bit perhaps there's something in us that makes us somewhat anti-social um anti-social as social is socializing is best described you know in the collective you know what is socializing in today's collective it's, it's usually like just getting wasted and you know let's have a drink together you know if which is fine like that's great like if that's what you like to do that's what you like to do but some people want to kind of separate themselves from society for various reasons and i think that's why a lot of people move to rural thailand so i think that's all rural anywhere that's what this is about for us it's a little bit anti-social so it's because you want 
peace and quiet, stability. Um, you know, there's no traffic around here. There's at this time of year very little air pollution, and in fact, only about we get air pollution about one month of the year. Whereas if in the city, obviously, there's a lot more cars, a lot more air pollution, things like that. So there are there are all these kind of benefits of of living here, growing your own food. Mulberries here, you got the chickens. There's, there's these benefits of living here. And look, you can go on holiday. You can jump in the car. I'll be jumping in the car, going to Pai very soon. I'm going up to the hill tribe, to the Karan tribe, and I'm going to be staying with them, with the tribe, for a number of weeks. So I'm really looking forward to it, to finish my book, Shaman. And you can jump in the car and you can go anywhere. But I love that we have this like little tranquil place of peace that once the travel is over, once the busyness of what we're doing is over, we can come back to our little haven of peace. And that's one of the benefits of living in rural Thailand. So don't move to rural Thailand without considering some of those um, ideas. And it's not for everybody. And I don't say it should be for everybody. Uh, this is not everybody should come to live in rural Thailand. You know, it's not... Uh, it's not suited for many people. Uh, even some people watch this vlog. They say, oh, I love the vlog, but I couldn't live there. No thanks. So uh, so it's just, it's interesting. It's not for everybody. And if you live somewhere rural, please in the comments, just let us know what I've missed. Because I've missed a lot. This is only like, a, I only get 20 minutes to ramble on. And so I have, I've probably missed some very important things about living rural. Um, you know, I've talked about the peace talked about the difficulties um particularly with like earning money and and you know the the weather can be tough sometimes um you know if you want to meet other expats there are other expats around here i don't know any uh because i purposely i think a lot of expats here just want to keep to themselves too like i see them at otis's school and stuff when I'm picking notice up from school, but they're not very talkative. They, they want to keep to themselves. I, I think a lot of people come to rural Thailand not to be social. Maybe they spent a long time in Bangkok or Hoa Hin or Pattaya or something. They're just they're done with that. They just want to have their own little family unit in their own little Garden of Eden, I guess. That's how I see it here anyway. Our little shire, our Garden of Eden. I'll just show you what daniel has been doing. She's cleared all this grassy area here and this papaya tree is coming up beautiful, guys. Look at this. I planted this. Yeah. It's gonna be a beauty, that. You gotta plant it near the house. If you're gonna plant papaya tree, don't plant it out in the middle of a field because when the storm comes, it'll, you know, it'll take a long time to grow and then the storm will just take it straight away. It'll just snap it. But you plant it near the house, it's got some shielding from the wind and the storm. So there's a, a top, very specific tip. We've got a white turkey born over there. She's just sitting in a food bowl, bless her. White turkey. She'll join the other turkeys soon enough. And uh, Damo's also cleared all the back here. I will mention too, our vegetables through that hot season they just couldn't survive guys there's no way we could keep the vegetables alive we barely kept ourselves alive so all of our vegetable patch which was here we've temporarily dismantled it and we've well Damo's cleared all this area so we're going to replant our vegetables here the eggplant survived and my strawberries survived the whole season which is it's quite rare because usually the strawberry farms they pack up the strawberries and then they start again after the hot season so growing growing vegetables in the hot season forget it and so our self-sustainable mission is in jeopardy in many ways look at this here <laughs> miseries over there our self-sustainable project is in jeopardy because we can't do it through the, the hot season very few can and then you've got the rainy season so there's really it, there's only a, a season where you can grow your vegetables so if we take that into account and I also do class self-sustainability as I mentioned on this vlog 
as not only just producing your own food, but how do you produce your own economic um, value? Like how do you produce your own economic fuel to keep going? Like right now I'm writing my books and um, Damo's selling a blazers. I'll show you some of her shop that she set up. So these are her blazers here, see? She sells. And we've got a vlog coming up on the main channel where we take you to the market in Cambodia to show you where she buys all of these. And she's turned her bamboo into her little workshop with all of her jackets. So, yeah, all right, go. Yeah, all right, go. These dogs are good dogs, guys. So being self-sustainable is selling your own goods, selling your own whatever you create, and and then using that energy, that money, uh, f to support your family and to support what you're doing. And that's what me and Damo are working on as well. So it's not just growing your own vegetables, it's growing your own economic value. So that's a little rant for today. Hope you're all well. Hope it's been insightful. Don't move to real Thailand if you can't manage those things. I think some people have a dream in their head. It'll be like this, it'll be like that. You know, it, it won't be, and it won't be like this vlog either, guys. Because this vlog is not just about rural Thailand. Like, our life, as, it, as you see it, is not just about the place. It's about the people, it's about the kids, it's about Damo and I, it's about what our philosophy on life, our the, the way we want to live that comes together in a certain harmony, you know. And for you, it'll be a different thing. It'll be a different... Um, ideology that you follow and a different set of individuals so um living in rural thailand won't be like this um and it's not like this you you guys see maybe 20 minutes of our life compacted together you know from maybe 40 minutes compacted from a whole week so it looks like it's very active but there's a lot of in between of non-active times there's not a lot of in between of just quiet times and a lot of in, in between of stressful times too with the kids taking the kids we just took hugo to the doctors as well so for his checkup so there's all there's all these things going on that you just don't necessarily see on the vlog so i don't want to paint a, a false picture of what it is i try and give it you as real as i can but um i hope it's been insightful and i hope you're all doing great so take care